Hello and welcome to the Growth Paramedic channel. Uh, this is another video on the pharmacology class series and today we are going to go through salbutamol. Now before we begin we will just do a quick disclaimer. So this channel is for educational purposes only and it's not intended as medical advice. While I always strive for 100% accuracy, errors may occur and medications and protocols do change over time. So please do not solely rely on information provided on this channel, but as additional reinforcement to your learning either at paramedic school or on road as a practicing clinician. So with all the disclaimers and all that out of the way, let's begin. So we're going to write it on the title. So we're going to go through salbutamol and very similar to all the other structures that we've done in the past actually let me just do that much better uh, very similar to the structure we have done in the previous videos we're going to go with the definition whoops the definition of subutamol including some general facts about it and then we go with the pharmacodynamics so how the drug works in the body and then we'll move into a uh, precaution or precautions that uh, I think you should be aware of when you're administering the drug. And these three are kind of the main ones I think are important when explaining the pharma, um, the pharmacology of these medications. If there is something that you think is missing in these classes and you want it added, just comment in the uh, in the videos, and I'll make it um, I'll add it to the to the education classes if there is enough interest. Um, these are time stamped so if you're in a rush or you want to quickly find out about how the drug works directly in the body you can skip forward the definition uh, and go straight into the pharmacodynamics you don't need to sit through the whole class just what you really need to learn okay perfect so now that we got that out of the way let's go straight to the definition part so subutamol has quite a few names, but the main ones that we're concerned about or want to know is subutamol is the, the general generic name, but it's also known as ventilin. ventilin. You'll find them in those kind of puffers that you see a lot of people who have asthma carrying, and also albuterol. So those are the main three. So if you ever see these three, just know that they're, they're the same thing. And subutamol, and I'll just be referring to this medication as subutamol. I won't go through the different names throughout the class. I'll just say the first one. So subutamol is a beta adrenergic agonist. Um, as we mentioned in the previous classes, an agonist, so we go here, an agonist is... Um, well, an agonist binds to receptors. Let me go here to receptors to produce a biological response. So we know then um, that uh, when subutamol is administered, typically for patients with respiratory distress or suffering an asthma episode or attack. It will bind to beta adrenergic receptors, or really, you could really see it as just beta two receptors. And I'll go through the reason why in the pharmacodynamics, but it will bind to these beta receptors, and it will produce a biological response. So that's generally it. Uh, what is it used for? I kind of just mentioned it there, so I will just write it again. So usage. It's mainly used to. Um, open up the airways, so you're looking at uh, asthma, so asthma attacks or, e um, or episodes. You're also looking at COPD, which is chronic obstructive um, pulmonary disease, and uh, severe anaphylaxis, so life threatening anaphylaxis that has airway involvement. So you can use those in all three. Uh, you will have to check the ambulance state guidelines in your wherever you're living because this could be different to um, depending on what protocols that they use subutamol on. But where I am, they use subutamol for these um, for these medical conditions. So now that we've got the definition out of the way, let's head to the pharmacodynamics. Perfect. So pharmaco. Uh, 
Pharmacodynamics. And for those who haven't watched the other videos, Pharmacodynamics is basically what the drug does to the body. Perfect. So, Subutamol is Subutamol. Just right here is a direct acting sympathomimetic agent. Sympathomimetic agent. Yep. Now it mainly, and I mentioned in the definition, it mainly affects beta 2 adreno receptors or you could just say receptors it doesn't really matter we mentioned in the adrenaline class that sympathomimetics so I'll kind of write it separately so I think I think here we mentioned in the other previous class a sympathomimetic is essentially um, Drugs that stimulate compounds that mimic effects of endogenous agonists of the sympathetic um, nervous system. So that's really what the sympathomimetics are. They basically, um, since uh, beta-2s are adrenal receptors, um, when, they, uh, when subutamol binds to these receptors, they will produce a biological response. So it's a sympathomimetic. Now, how much space do I have? Perfect. So keep going down and keep talking about subutamol. Subutamol is a very selective agonist. This is really important to note. Yep. And the reason for this, I'll, I'll continue on, um, it is 29 times more selective for beta 2 adrenergic receptors then beta 2 oh sorry <laughs> beta 1 adrenergic receptors which is why i mentioned before that it's really we really just mentioned beta two receptors when it comes to subutamol's subutamol and what it acts on because whilst it does and it can act on beta ones it has a higher sensitivity to beta beta two receptors so in that means um to 20 more i should finish that adrenergic receptors so from here then we know that it has a greater oh, let me change to color greater sensitivity for the polymallary beta 2 adrenergic if I can spell right adrenergic receptors uh, compared to The beta two, the beta one. Sorry, I keep mixing that. Beta one adrenergic receptors located in the heart. Just a bit of writing. So that's really important to note. So, subutamol very selective. 
um, will bind to beta-2 receptors far greater than beta-1 receptors, and the beta-1 receptors are located mostly in the heart, and the beta-2s are, are also in the heart as well, but are primarily in the pulmonary or respiratory tract. Um, and that is what uh, the main kind of aim of the drug is, and hence why we use it for respiratory-related medi um, medical conditions. Um, we'll go to the next point. So I will leave that here. You can just kind of pause it if you need to write anything down. But let's go to the next empty slot. <clears throat> so when subutamol is administered, Perfect. Generally, it is either a tablet or capsule form. But mainly, and, and this is what I've used in the ambulance, it's given via nebulizer. And if you're not sure what nebulizer is, I'm just going to write it down here. So nebulizer is a device for producing a very fine spray of liquid and this is used for inhaling medical drugs. So when you're administering sabutamol, you're actually administering sabutamol with oxygen and when you put the medication in the nebulizer, it actually gets turned into a fine spray. And when you put that on a on a patient's face, they breathe that in with the oxygen. So you'll be using concurrently with oxygen. And as well as that, you will use subutamol if it's a very severe form of um, asthma. You'll be using with ipotropium bromide, which is another which is another medication that we'll cover later on in this um, in this series. So with that being said, it is either given via uh, tablet or capsule form or via nebulizer and it acts primarily, primarily on beta 2 receptors. So really important, it's on the beta 2 receptors. And again, I just have to reiterate as well, if you asked, it does, does act on both beta ones, on both beta receptors, beta ones and beta twos. However, we know that sibutramol has preferential effects on beta two. So, we're just reinforcing that to you. I know I've repeated that before, but that is something I need to really um, hone down: is that sibutramol has preferential effect on beta 2 receptors and it's because of that and they're mainly located in the airway we do see uh, we do see the effects effects of subutamol um, being seen so mainly seen in the respiratory system slash airway perfect um, but again however there are also beta 2 adrenoreceptors in the human heart and that is why I mentioned that uh, oh, actually let me write that so beta 2 receptors also located in the heart uh, and um, whilst they are located in the human heart um, there isn't a really precise nature or function to these beta 2 receptors so it hasn't been confirmed by studies what they actually are intended for so we can't rule out cardiac effects either which is actually one of the precautions that I will talk about later is that um, cannot rule out cardiac effects but things such as like dysrhythmias 
Okay, so going back to the to the effects or axon. So it acts on beta two receptors. Now this then causes bronco dilation. And now that's that's the main bread and butter to what uh, Subutamol is used for. So please, if you don't know, if you don't, if you learn from anything from this class, is that um, administering administration of Subutamol um, acts on the beta two receptors, and that causes bronchodilation. So it opens the airway. So important. Opens the airway. Perfect. <clears throat> it's at um. It's at its administration also increases the, uh, the cyclic AMP. This results in activation uh, of proteins or protein uh, such as Kinase, kinase A that leads to relaxation. Uh, so that will then, because of the increase in the cyclic amp, and I'll explain why that's important. So because of that, it relaxes smooth muscles of all airway so the trachea so from the trachea all the way to the terminal bronchioles so that's a really big effect that uh, subunimal has on the airway uh, and I put it in a comment when it came to the cyclic AMP I placed it as a comment on one of the YouTube um, videos I think it was adrenaline and um, this is super relevant to this medication too because at a cellular level and I'm actually going to write it down because it's super important that you understand this for um, subutamol at a cellular level cellular level mediator release is modulated or controlled that's controlled by a steady state resting, really important word, resting intracellular cyclic AMP. This is also known as uh, C amp or cramp, <laughs> but uh, low, low KC uh, levels. Now, why is that? Why is that important to know? Well, substances such as, um, well, substances that elevate AMP, such as sibutamol, um, inhibit mediator release um, mediator release so by administering subutamol the resting or the steady state resting cyclic AMP um, is increased and because it's been increased that leads to inhibition of mediator release from mast cells in the airway I tell you, should write that down as well. So that's also very important. So, because subutamol elevates the cyclic AMP, it causes inhibition of mediator release from mast cells. Now we don't need you. Don't really need to know what mast cells are. We're not going to go into that details in the airway. 
So why is that important? Why why am I saying you get you you're probably wondering why does that matter that um this this medication or salbutamol inhibits the release of uh, mediators from mast cells in the airway? Well, there's actually research to indicate that um, bronchio, so in the airway, mast cells in the airway, are actually involved in bronco constriction of the airway um, in severe or ba basically allergic asthma. So by inhibiting mast cells releasing mediators, we are minimizing further bronchoconstriction and activation. Because that's the main goal of sabutamol is to open up the airways and if we're also stopping further constriction of the airway through stopping mast cells releasing, releasing mediators, then that is all the more reason why we should be giving subutamol. And having that extra knowledge behind you will make you a much better clinician when you're in the situation that you have you know, that bronchoconstriction because you know that it's twofold. It's increasing the steady state resting um, cyclic AMP and it's also um, um, relaxing the smooth muscles in, in the airway and that's causing um, bronchodilation. And we'll talk about um, asthma in a different series and we'll explain um, how bronchoconstriction works and... I didn't get that. Oh, sorry, that was series and how bronchoconstriction works and all that. Okay, perfect. So that kind of wraps up the pharmacodynamics. So we'll go now to the precaution. This one's the, pre the precaution part. It's not going to be very big today because there's only one main thing I want to talk about. Um, is that one of the precautions that we hinted about in the pharmacodynamics is that um, beta adrenergic oh, whoops, spelled that wrong adrenergic receptors are located located in the heart um, and they and there have been clinical studies that shown administration of sabutamol uh, can produce cardiovascular effects. So we'll just write that down here. Um, we'll just write studies. So studies have shown that administration of sabutamol can produce. Uh, cardiovascular effects cardiovascular effects but that's in some patients so that's not in all your patients so what's really important when it comes to this precaution is that you're constantly monitoring the patients um, and in large dosages um, subutamol can cause dysrhythmias so that's also an important thing to note so that are mainly kind of aiming to those severe asthma patients that um, are being given multiple doses of nebulized subutamol. Um, you should have a 12 lead put on them for further assessment and monitoring their, their heart rate. But that's mainly the kind of, that's mainly the precaution I want to talk about today. I won't go through any others. And um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you guys found that really useful. If you um, want me to add in more content or any other sections that you think are useful, such as the pharmacokinetics, please do comment in the in the video, and I will make um, an effort to uh, to do that in the future. Well, I hope you guys learned something today, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.